Welcome everyone, I am Talk Custom, and today we're going to do a full introduction and demonstration using the Brother SDX125E. Uh, this is a vinyl cutter. Uh, I made this shirt using this particular machine right here, which was a lot of fun, and it can do a ton of other projects. So first I'm going to show you what this machine comes with, and then what kinds of projects you can do with it. All right, now when you get your machine out of the box, it'll look something like this without all the stickers, of course. And the first thing we have to do is just plug in our power supply on the back left side of the machine there. Uh, once that's plugged in, you can hold the power button for about a second and it will turn on. Uh, the screen does move up and then it'll do its little startup test. Now when you're ready to start, you can just touch the screen. This is a touch screen and I can just hit OK and it's going to kind of get it ready for a project. Uh, now I can cycle through and decide on what kind of project I want to do, which is really nice. Uh, when I open this up, we're going to see our cutting bed and it's also got a little bit of storage here. Uh, it's got a drawer here, which I use to keep some of my tools. Uh, for uh, cleaning up my vinyl and then I've got some extra blades in here for different types of projects so having that storage is really nice. Now when you first get your machine this is the blade that comes with it so uh, you just see the Brother logo in the front. I'm gonna put this all the way down and then just snap this little bar into place and now we are all set. Now this machine is ready to go so we just have to figure out what kind of project do we want to make and what do we want to tell it to cut. And we're going to fold this up and talk about uh, the mats that come with it and what kind of material we can use. So the machine came with this standard tack adhesive mat, which is 12 by 12 inches. This one is 12 by 24 for some larger projects. And then this is a low tack 12 by 12 inch mat here. Something else I bought separately was a weeding tool. This is extremely important and I'll show you why. Uh, and a little spatula. And then I also got kind of a soft squeegee which will help get any air bubbles out of vinyl that we do. So these are some very important tools that I use all the time. As a couple of simple beginner level projects we can do, this is just a heat transfer vinyl that I had cut out and then I ironed this onto that. I've washed this shirt maybe 12 times or so and it has not faded at all. Uh, also, this shirt was only like five bucks and then I tailored the sides so that it fit me really well. As another example, I've got uh, this little water bottle and I cut out some pearlescent color shifting vinyl uh, using the machine. And this is a permanent vinyl, so I've washed this in the washing machine about, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 times and it has not peeled off at all either. So uh, some really, High quality looking projects that look store bought, which is really nice. Now these are just two examples of what we can make. So we did a heat transfer vinyl t-shirt. We've got a sticker that we made for this, but you can also cut thin wood or EVA foam, acrylic, all kinds of other materials with this machine. Um, but for the sake of this video, we're going to do a demonstration on how you can make your very own t-shirt using this vinyl cutter. Now, to start designing and making your own cut files, you're going to need a program called Brother Canvas Workspace. So I'm here at canvasworkspace.brother.com. Now, when I get to this website, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit until I see this Canvas Workspace right here. Uh, I'm going to click Download Software. Now, depending on which kind of vinyl cutter you have, uh, you'll select it from the list and then download the software for that. Uh, I have the SDX125E, so that's what I have installed. Now, once you've installed your software, uh, I'm going to open it up and it's going to look like this. If you don't have a login, it'll ask you to make a login. Otherwise, it'll just take you right to this screen here. So this here is a few examples of some projects that you can make if you need ideas. Otherwise, you end up with a blank workspace on a 12 by 12 inch mat like this. Now, once you end up at your blank workspace, uh, there's all kinds of tools where you can make shapes and I could do text and it would do... Uh, everything that you see in black lines, it would cut. So I could do a whole bunch of different things uh, with all of the tools that they give me here, which is really nice. Uh, but I always like to make my own custom graphics. So we're going to make something custom. Now, there are two methods of doing cut files with this software. The first, I can do an image tracing cut, and I'm going to import an image from my computer. Uh, so I'm just going to find a black and white image of my logo. Uh, and now it asked me how many colors there are. So there's only two colors, just black and white. So I'm going to select two. 
And I want this to trace the outer edge only since there's no interior cuts that I need. If you have anything with interior cuts, you would do trace areas by color. Uh, otherwise, I'm just doing the outside silhouette. Now, before I move forward, I'm gonna uncheck this box that says paste the image of the drawing area because that creates some issues when I am doing my cut file. So now I've just got uh, this black line of my logo here, and that is going to let me put it anywhere I want on this workspace. Now, I want to do a cut file that I'm gonna put on the sleeve of the shirt that we're making. So I'm gonna make a Talk Custom branded sleeve. So I have to figure out how big I want this logo to be. So for a sleeve on a short sleeve shirt, I usually make it about three inches wide. So I can either follow the grid that's on here and just make it uh, three squares like that. Or I can go to this edit box here on the top right, click that, and the width, I actually got it perfectly at three. I can type 3.0 and it's gonna make it three inches wide, uh, and then it will scale the height as needed as we have our aspect ratio checked. So now I can move this up into the corner so that I can conserve vinyl. And now we have to come up with an image for what's gonna go on the front of the shirt. All right, so I'm in a program called paint.net right now, which is a free uh, graphic design program. And we're gonna make our own custom uh, design for our cut file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this cute little picture of a teddy bear here. I'm gonna put him like that. And I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail about how I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm just gonna make something really bizarre so that people are very confused when they see me wearing this shirt. So I've got a skull here that I'm gonna put over our cute teddy bear with a heart on his tummy. Now I'm just gonna kind of merge these together so that it looks like it makes some sense maybe, but this is not gonna make any sense at all. Perfect, so we have... <laughs> Perfect, so we have our design done. This is ridiculous, but I don't really care because it's just for a demo. Okay, so now we're just gonna save this as a JPEG and we're gonna call it Skull Bear Logo. And uh, you can use PNGs, just make sure there's nothing transparent because that will mess with uh, Canvas Workspace. So now we're gonna jump back over to Canvas Workspace and I'm going to do the same thing where we use our image tracing. I'm gonna grab an image from my computer I'm gonna select our cute little skull bear. And uh, because the eyes and the heart and these open areas aren't being selected, we're gonna change this to all areas by color. And we're gonna change this back to two since it's just black and white. So when we hit okay, it's gonna give us our image and I can select it, but I won't be able to move or resize it. It gives me an error code that says there are locked objects. So to get around that, I'm gonna to go to my layers here and I can see Right here it says image. This is the background image of what we have for our graphics. So this is locked. So I'm gonna unlock it, select this, and now we can move it and resize it. Uh, and what I really wanna do is to uh, toggle the visibility as off. Now all I can see is just the cut lines for this particular graphic. Now, as I look closely at this graphic, I can tell some of these lines are a little bit thicker. So this is telling me there's maybe more than one cut going on here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, select the interior of this eye and the interior of this eye and delete these. Uh, the nose looks like it's doubled up. Um, the left foot is doubled up. The right foot is doubled up. The heart is and everything else should be fine. So now I've just got uh, our adorable little graphic that we have here. I'm gonna make this as big as I can, like that. I'm gonna cut both my sleeve logo and uh, the skull at the same time. I can do something like this on a 12 by 12 inch mat. Now, it's really important that you try to keep everything within this red dotted cut line. Uh, that is kind of the safe area to work with, so I always make sure that it's within that red boundary. Now that we've got our cut file ready, we can go and we are gonna save this as our skull bear cut file. Uh, and then I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna save that. 
Something that's really nice about this software is I can transfer this file through a wire, through a USB stick, or over my Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to transfer this FCM file via the internet. It's going to process and say, you can now download this from the internet. So uh, I can download it onto the machine itself, and I can hit OK. So this is done. I'm ready to take this over to the machine, and we can start cutting this out. All right, so we're back here at our machine, and I'm going to bring the screen up here. Now, if you haven't set your machine up, we need to do that first. So uh, the first thing we have to do is scroll down, and we're going to look for something that says Network, uh, and make sure it's enabled. And then you're going to do your Setup Wizard. It'll search for your home Wi-Fi, uh, minus Talk City, so I hit OK. Um, and it says it's already saved, uh, so I'm just going to hit yes. Uh, otherwise, it would ask you for your password. Once you do that, it'll connect to your Wi-Fi, and then you can transfer files easily. Now, once you've set up your Wi-Fi, you'll need to use the same login from the software on the computer on this machine so that it can transfer files. So I'm already logged into mine as Talk Custom. Otherwise, put your login and password there. Once those two things are set up, you will easily be able to transfer files from your computer to this machine. Now, once that's done, I can hit retrieve data, and then I can go to this little laptop with the Wi-Fi symbol, hit that, and it should retrieve my little skull bear with my logo right there. Now, something that's really cool is I can edit some of these, so I can actually hit edit and move this around if I need to. Uh, I liked the way it was before, which is fine. Uh, but something that's very, very important, if you're making t-shirts specifically, uh, you, you're going to have to edit your object and then you're going to flip it horizontally. This is more or less symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter. But it's really important if you have like words or letters or a very specific shape that you flip it horizontally because it's going to cut it out backwards and then we're going to iron it on the correct way. My logo is completely symmetrical, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, you can also resize it and do some other things here. Once that's done, I'm going to hit OK. And then when I hit OK again, it's going to ask me uh, which one I want to do. Now, I want to cut this, uh, so we're going to hit Cut, and then we're going to look at our cut options here. So cut speed is 3 is fine. I'm going to keep my cut pressure on auto. One thing that's really nice about this machine is it will detect what kind of material is in the machine while it's cutting, which is really nice. Uh, and all vinyl, whether it's you're making stickers or something you're going to make a t-shirt with, comes with vinyl on one side and a film that holds the vinyl on the other. So I want to make sure half cut is switched from off to on. I want to make sure half cut is on. Once that is done, I can hit OK, and then we are ready to go. Once we load the mat in, the Start button will turn bright green, and then we can start cutting out our project. All right, now I've got a brand new mat here, and it should look something like this. So right out of the package, it should be nice and clean, and there is a film that you're going to need to remove. And it is sticky in this gridded area here. Now, once you remove this film, do not throw this away because you can use this to put back on here to keep dust from getting on the sticky part of your mat. So make sure you keep this film and set it aside for later. Something that's important to mention is the up arrow goes into the machine first. All these little symbols help the machine figure out uh, what kind of mat it is so that it knows how to operate. All right, so I'm going to move our mat for right now. Now for this project, we're going to be using a stretchy, fusible vinyl. Uh, the outside of this is the film, which holds the vinyl in shape, and then the inside is where the vinyl itself is. That's why we have to do a mirror cut, because it's going to be backwards, and then when we put it on our fabric, it will be the correct way. Now, since this is about 24 inches of vinyl, I'm going to shorten this to exactly 12 inches. All right, so now I've got exactly 12 inches of vinyl, which is what we should need, and we've got our mat, and the film is off, so this is sticky right here. So I want to put the film side of the vinyl against the mat so that the vinyl side is sticking up. Now, forgive me if I'm blocking the camera, but I'm just matching up that top left corner, and then I'm going to match up the top right corner like that and kind of smooth this out so that 
It's on there nice and smooth. Uh, now I'm gonna kind of just lightly roll it down the middle with my hand. It should stick right away, um, but I'm gonna show you one more trick that I like to do with my projects. Now this is a brand new mat, so it's sticking really well, but over time it'll start to kind of lose its stickiness. So sometimes I'll just use masking tape to kind of uh, hold the corners in place a little bit, which is fine. Uh, sometimes I will tape it all the way down the side if it's really peeling up, but for right now, I am just gonna tape, like this corner is kind of coming up. So I'm gonna tape that down. Now that we have this all set up properly, uh, the machine is ready and the mat is ready so we can load this in and start cutting right now. Now that we're all set, I can open my machine and I'm going to load this in, uh, arrow pointing up, and I've got my regular blade set in there that came with the machine. Uh, so there's a couple little notches on either side. I'm just gonna very uh, lightly press them up against these rubber rollers right here. And then there's a button right here uh, that will load the mat in. Okay, so now that everything is set up, uh, the start button is bright green, so I know I can start it, and I just wanna look over my uh, details to make sure half cut is on, and I've got all the pressure the way I want it. It should take about two minutes for this to cut out, which is nice and fast. Something else that's very important is to make sure there's nothing obstructing the back because the mat is gonna move through the machine out the backside while it's cutting. Uh, there is also a little tray here, which is nice. Uh, so it will make sure the mat goes up and over this wire or anything that might be blocking it. So now that that's all set up, I can hit start and this is gonna cut out our design. So here we go, I hit start. Uh, you might not be able to see it on here, but it should tell you how long it's gonna take for this entire thing to cut out. Right now, the blade is calibrating to figure out how deep the material is. Uh, and now it's already cutting out our design. All right, so now it says finish cutting, so I can hit OK. Now I can hit the mat button and it will unload the mat and this will just slide right out. So now I'm just gonna turn the machine off uh, by holding the power button, putting that down, and this is done for right now. Okay, so now that we've got our mat unloaded, I'm gonna take all the tape off. And now I'm just gonna peel the vinyl off of the mat and move this aside. All right, so naturally this vinyl is gonna to wanna to curl back up because that's how it was wrapped. So I'm just gonna put some one, two, three blocks to weigh this thing down. Um, and unfortunately my camera cannot pick up where the cut lines are, but I can see them very clearly here. Okay, now the first thing I wanna do is my Talk Custom logo is up here in the top left corner. So I'm gonna use a rotary cutter to just cut out around where my sleeve logo is gonna go. All right, now I can tell that there's a bunch of empty space about right here. So I'm cutting around where the bear design is. And I know this seems like a really small piece of scrap, but I can actually make stickers or little logos out of this for other projects. Now it's time for us to remove all the negative space from our cut. So um, that's where our little weeding tool comes in. It's called weeding when you take out all of the uh, extra vinyl here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start in the bottom right corner and I just wanna get between the vinyl and the film, kinda like this. And it's okay if you rip it because this is all just gonna be thrown in the garbage. Now. I can see I've got a little bit of a good start here, so I'm gonna start peeling this up like that. And then my first cut line is about right here. I don't know if the camera can see it, but I'm gonna peel this up, and when it gets to that cut line, it should just leave that there like that. So now what I'm gonna do is with my hands, I'm just gonna peel off all of the vinyl around the silhouette of the shape that we just cut. Uh, if it cut, all the way through, which it should have, it should be nice and easy for you to do that. Uh, some of these little cracks, I can just tear the vinyl and get back to this part later, which is where the skull starts. Okay, that looks perfect. So we have our silhouette, but there's this part right between the skull and the teddy bear that is not connected. So I'm gonna 
use my little weeding tool to grab that vinyl and drag this across. And I should end up with something kind of like this. All right, so that looks good. Now there's the eyes, the nose, the heart, and the feet. So all I have to do is kind of the same thing like we did in the corner, where I'm just going to make sure I'm grabbing the interior of the eye here, just getting between the vinyl and the film. I'm gonna pull up, and again, it's okay if it tears. And I just wanna get this up to where that cut line is. Once it reaches the cut line, it should just start peeling off like that. All right, so everything looks good, but there was one little spot where there was kind of a bubble as I was taking out one of the eyes. So I'm just going to use the round edge of this to kind of smooth that out. It doesn't really matter because we're going to iron this down in the heat will hold it to the fabric of the shirt. But I just wanna make sure this looks as smooth as I can. So that looks good. And now as I zoom out, um, we can see we've got a very ridiculous little logo that we can put on a shirt. Now I almost forgot to do my little sleeve logo. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I start in the corner and then we're just gonna weed this whole thing out. Perfect, so now I've got my logo for the sleeve and we have our other design already. All right, so now we have to decide what kind of garment do we wanna put this on. I'm gonna use this $5 t-shirt that I got from the fabric store uh, and then we are going to put it right on the front here. Now we cut it out on this side, but it is mirrored and the sticky side of the film will go against the shirt. So it will kind of stick to your project as you're doing it. And I'm just kind of centering the top of the skull with where the center of the neckline is there. I'm gonna put this on here like this, and scoot it up. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of hand pressure on here just to keep it stick and have it nice and smooth for a moment. All right, so once you have your design where you want it, uh, this won't stick that well, but just enough to keep it in place. Uh, so now I've got uh, about 12 by 12 inch sheet of parchment paper. Uh, this isn't 100% necessary, but it will give you a little bit cleaner results. Uh, so I do recommend using parchment paper if you have it. Now it recommends heat of, I think, 305 degrees, which is the wool setting on an iron. I always go with cotton because I feel like it does a better job. And make sure that your steam is off. So my iron is hot. I've got it on the cotton setting. And what I wanna do is hold it in place on each section for about 15 seconds. Uh, now my iron will beep after 30 seconds, so I'm just gonna wait a few moments and then kind of move from one area to the next. And then I'm gonna do this until I've got nice full coverage all the way around the entire graphic. Now, once I feel like I've covered all of it, I'll just kind of press firmly an iron across it, kind of like this. I'm pressing pretty firm right now, just to make sure that we've got good adhesion to the entire thing. Okay, so we've got that fused on there, which looks good, and uh, it might be hard to see it, but that uh, plastic film is still around here. Now, this is very hot to the touch because I just took the iron off. What we wanna do is wait until the film is just a little bit warm so that it's easy to peel off, but it still sticks to the shirt. Uh, the more you let it cool, the more the vinyl will stick to the fabric, but we don't want it to cool so much that it continues to stick to this film. So I'm just gonna kinda of keep touching it until it feels very slightly warm. And when we get to that point, we're gonna peel this off. All right, now this is just barely warm, so what I'm gonna do is Start at one corner, and this is very important, that as you're peeling, if it's not sticking to the t-shirt, it is not fused on there enough. So this is sticking just fine, and I'm just gonna very lightly peel the film away from where the vinyl is. 
Now for this part, take your time, because if you notice any vinyl starts to come up, that's a very bad thing. Um, but so far, this is looking just fine. All right, so that looks very smooth and clean, and because this is stretchy, it will stretch with the fabric, which is nice. You can wash it, it should be fine. If you ever notice that any parts start to peel off, uh, you can reuse this film, put it on here, and you can iron over any parts that seem to be lifting off. Uh, definitely make sure you use parchment paper for that as well. But we've got our main design on here, and now we're just gonna do the sleeve uh, with my little logo. All right, so now to do the sleeve, I'm just gonna kind of grab this and open up where the center shoulder seam is. That's our center of our sleeve. And I'm gonna lay this as flat as I possibly can. It's not always easy to do this, and I'm gonna try to make sure there's nothing bunched up underneath here. So that looks pretty smooth right there. Now, I'm gonna take my logo and I'm gonna put it so that uh, the center is right matched up with that center seam. Kind of like that. Now once again, I'm gonna take my parchment paper, lay this on over our design, and I can fit the whole iron over this entire design. So I'm just gonna hold that in place for about 30 seconds. And then when that is <coughs> fused on there, we're gonna do the same thing. All right, now once again, I am just going to very slowly peel this off, making sure that the vinyl is sticking to the fabric instead of the film. Everything there looks good. And that is now on there permanently, which is perfect. All right, so we've got our t-shirt done. Uh, we've got our graphic on there and I've got my little logo on the sleeve. Uh, one thing I can tell is that this shirt is gonna be too wide for me. So I'm gonna tailor this before I even put it on right now. All right, so we have our shirt, both designs are on here and it is tailored. Uh, now it's just time for me to try this on and see how it fits. All right, and there you have it. So we've got our shirt uh, with both graphics done. Uh, everything turned out really clean. I'm happy I tailored this. I wish I could tell you this was the stupidest thing I've ever made, but that would not be true at all. Um, but I'm pretty pleased with this. I might actually wear this outside, um, but both graphics look good. Uh, beyond that, I think we did an excellent job of showing you the basics of uh, how to use the vinyl cutter itself, how to use the software, and one application that you can use to put uh, some graphics on something like a t-shirt. Now, off camera, I could have done this whole thing in about 25 minutes, maybe, from design to finished. Uh, this one here took 71 minutes to cut that design out, and then about two hours to weed out all of the negative space. Uh, so here's a great example of how uh, detailed you can go, and I absolutely love this shirt. Uh, and now I've just got one more shirt with an absolutely ridiculous logo on it. If you have any questions about this machine or any of the steps that we did during this video, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I will probably do a couple other videos of what this machine can do in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video on how to use a vinyl cutter from setup to finishing a project. Uh, I really appreciate all of your support and we will see you in the next video.